evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. I want to say a very big thank you for joining me again this evening. Uh, so many things happened today from some greedy... Can I, am I allowed to use some terrible words tonight? Because I'm so angry and I just feel like using these terrible words. And I don't think there's anything bad in me actually using those terrible words. Because the people I wanted to use the terrible word for, they actually deserve to get these terrible words. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> it's too heavy for my mouth because the children is going to complain. But well, mind you, it's, it's nearly 9 o'clock. Maybe I should reserve it till after 9 o'clock. And I can bust the bubble after 9 o'clock. Because these people are just terrible disease in our society. They are just terrible people in our society and I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it. I don't even know what to say because I'm just angry about it. So angry. The topic of today's program is the greater, greatness in our leaders because I'm not used to saying someone is greedy. I don't even know how to say greediness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show tonight. I'm going to leave you and I'm going to start the show with this little clip. It's not that long. Uh, it doesn't matter who is in the image. What matters is the message is trying to convey to you guys. So welcome to uh, African politics with the boss tonight. My name is Ade Thomas. I'm just lovely, just truly, and I haven't changed my name like Chris would say. If I change my name, you will be the first to know. So instead of showing these people's picture, I'm gonna try and climb on the picture with something else so that I don't want to represent those people that I want that I'm talking about them because I'm not actually talking about them I'm talking about something else so here's the clip only 30 seconds now thank you <laughs> Subala the Isaac Bear Budo Jawa, Toriba Jawa, Apuru Kitigo. We are by the Lori of Colori, I say. We are by the Lori of Colori. I don't think they, that my guests tonight even know the meaning of that song. So let me introduce them, the two of them at the moment. I, I might probably get a couple more later on, but I've got two who are physically present with me tonight here. So let me reveal their picture. This is here. Yeah, here yeah, they are. Two beautiful ladies. Maybe tonight we can call it All Ladies Night. I don't know what to say. All Ladies Night. Uh, let's start with Joy. Joy, will you please introduce yourself to my audience, please? Yeah. You need to pull your camera towards you a little bit so that your head can touch. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, okay. Can you introduce yourself to the audience, please? Yeah, my name is Joy Ujowo. And. Um, I'm a secondary school teacher in London. Wow, fantastic. So I'm gonna go to the next lady who is actually a princess in the house. Princess, will you please introduce yourself to our audience like this? Hello everyone and good evening. My name is Princess Oster. I um, run my own Mary Kay business and I also work as a contractor for the NHS dealing with information governance and data protection. Hello everyone. Fantastic. So these are the two ladies. The, the men decide to do a run out with tonight, but don't worry, they're here. Did you like my t-shirt? Did you like it guys? Pray for our youth with burning candle. Uh, uh, the good thing about it is that we have to do things to inspire others and make sure that our people are happy. You are happy with what we are doing. I want to say thank you to my audience and thank you for the facilitator of these two beautiful ladies. Uh, some people have to go and dig, dig all their archive to get this beautiful lady up to your screen tonight. And I'm sure we're going to have a wonderful night uh, together. No, no, no. Not that kind of night. What are you talking about? Come on. Don't talk like that. No reason like that. We can have a wonderful program together. Uh, come on. I sure I know. Be careful. The song, the, the, the music I play at the beginning. Did you understand the music, sisters? Okay. I'm going to try and translate. It's one of the Nigerian Yoruba musicians. 
He says, if you are a leader, you need to be careful. Why are you believing like a fly? That until a fly dies inside a bear, you will never stop going to that bear. He doesn't go there and leave. Any, any fly that goes to a bear will definitely die inside that bear. I've, I've been to a church some times ago, and these women are saying, ah, let my boyfriend become fly in my life so that he cannot escape. <laughs> if we grow old and die, we will die together when we grow old. We, we will not be able to leave. So that is just a summary of that, of that, uh, of that song we, we had in the beginning. I have some few clips. I don't know, maybe we should start talking first before we go to that clips. Maybe that will give the, the, the two other gentlemen some chance to come in. Uh, or maybe we should just forget about them. Men, men are not important sometimes, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, uh, we're important. Baby. We change the whole box and all the other things. Eh? Okay, my let me go to you, Princess, first. Mm -hmm. You don't have any subjects in Nigeria. Yeah, you don't have any subjects in Nigeria. But during the COVID-19 era, you actually gave us some free goodies to people. You didn't do it yourself. You went through a third party so that you're not saying, ah, you're giving it to the people you know directly. So you're actually giving this palliative to people who need it. Why did yes. you do that? Let's go to Princess first. Um, why did I do that? Luckily, um, I was blessed enough um, that somebody who I went to school with, who's my friend, um, decided she wanted to help people because of the situation. And um, as soon as I knew she wanted to do that, I got really very excited. I couldn't afford to help on a skill she was doing. I could afford to help a few individuals and everything, but um people were suffering you know everything came to a standstill with very short notice nobody was prepared for it you know all of a sudden it's on lockdown if you have a zero hour contract you're getting no money um people were hungry starving you know and things like that so um i wanted to do what i could you know to be able to help people um if they are lucky enough to escape the disease then they shouldn't die of hunger you have to be your brother's keeper. To be your brother's keeper, thank you very much. And how happy or how sad were you now that you see some people are keeping so much stops of food? The food that they cannot finish in the next 20 years themselves. Um, I wouldn't say, um, I know you just asked me how happy or sad I am. I'm neither happy nor sad. I'm furious. Mm. I am irate. Okay. The first one that I saw, the way, the first warehouse that I saw was the one that's based in Lagos. And I was like, what? I mean, how could you have so much? Because like, um, the, 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 um, foundation that I helped, you know, that provided the palliatives that I distributed, they did so much in Lagos. When I say so much, they gave out palliatives in so many areas. It got to the point where they were actually giving out cooked food as well as, you know, giving out um, food stuff and everything and stuff like that. So seeing that quantity in that one warehouse, and if I thought that was bad enough, then a few hours later, you know, as the hours went by, I'm seeing more places. Calabar. They say Calabar, they say Oshun, they say here, they say that. Are you kidding me? I'm furious. You are totally furious. Let's go to Sister Joy. Sister Joy, mm -hmm. you did palliative as well during the COVID-19 era, did you? Yeah. Where, why did you do it? Are you, is your house flowing with milk and honey? <laughs> Um, just like a uh, princess of the bed, yeah. um, I uh, happened to uh, know the uh, person that was doing it. She's a friend and an old school mate. Um, I mean, I was really touched and moved by her, you know, hospitality, her, her warmth in terms of, you know, um, 
trying to help people that are really suffering uh, in terms of not just that they lost their jobs or people that are not working, but then these are Africans that, especially Nigerians, that most of them uh, like uh, eat their native food and most of these things were not coming in at that time because of the lockdown. So she was able to bring, you know, Nigerian food, uh, palm oil, things like that, to help people. I mean, somebody living in Nigeria, coming to London to do that, I mean, yeah. I couldn't afford it. I mean, the only way I can, you know, contribute is to help distribute um, the food and all the things she did. You know, it, um, it was a very... Um, for me, it was quite emotional, and um, I was excited that somebody could do that for people that were really struggling. So I, that, that was the only way I could, you know, contribute my own. Um... Sister, I really appreciate that. That is wonderful. So do you know how many warehouses they find this palliative now? Do you know how many? How, how many can you count? How many can you guess? How many do you where know? In where in Nigeria or in yeah. London? No, the, the palliative defining warehouses that have been stored away in warehouses. Which warehouse? The one in Nigeria or yeah. here? They, 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 today, in, in the last few days, yesterday and today, they find a lot of food being tucked away in some warehouses. And they're supposed to be a uh, COVID 19 palliative that the government did. They gave it to some certain people and they store it. Some warehouse as big as a freedom, freedom, uh, freedom, uh, football pitch. Food. They find one in Lagos. They find in Oshun. They find in uh, Ilori as well. And people are hungry. People are suffering. And some people decide to keep this food to themselves. Have a look at this video today. That is a complete shame. A complete shame. That is in Lagos. Then they find in Oshun. Then they find another one in the lorry. And these are people's property. And they kept these properties away from the people. Sister Joy, are you shocked? I think we lost Sister Joy there. Uh, let's yeah, go back look, to Princess. Yeah, it looks like it's frozen. It's probably frozen. Uh, Princess, yeah. what comes to your mind when you're furious about this? Because I was not I, 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 I think I think about man's inhumanity to man. I mean, how can you be so cruel? The sheer volume of it, you know, each of these warehouses are huge. You just described it as the size of, of the Freedom Football pitch. These were stacked way up to the wall all around. I, 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 I just don't understand. I don't get it. What were they intending to do with it? How long were they going to keep it for? Were they planning to start their own supermarket? Even if you wanted, that, that thing was it will stock more than one supermarket. How can you keep that? It was here a conspiracy amongst a certain number of people. How many are involved? You know, we are still like like in England here. We are uh, you know we are in tier two of the pandemic. You know, so we've got restrictions, lockdown, and blah blah, and everything because it's real. The pandemic is still there, going on. 
you know people haven't recovered in nigeria they kept them locked in they wouldn't let them go shopping and things like that we were allowed to go shopping here in england you know and things like that they weren't allowed to go shopping they couldn't go to school they couldn't work so they had nothing you know do you have a conscience I don't think this I, is because I, th I think this I think this evening I saw a video and they said that was in Calabar same scenario again wow. I am sure that this is in all the states in Nigeria <laughs> all 36 of them you'll find this situation where people are keeping things that are meant for the people mm. Mm. and the, the funniest thing the funniest thing is that some people gave palliative help and some people refuse to give palliative help. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's not only food they gave. The government gave money. I remember one of the ministers was saying, ask your traditional rulers what they've done with your palliative. Are these people not supposed to call them to others and say, hang on guys, the food we gave you. And even if you don't want to say that, you can say, we gave X amount of food to so, 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 and so, so person. Maybe that might solve the problem. And I quite I quite agree with you because I remember um, there's this lady, I don't know what her position is, but she kept on coming out and talking about how um, they were sharing out palliative, they had given to everybody in every state, um, they were feeding school children and stuff like that. I talked to the people I knew in Nigeria, nobody's children were fed. Or they said they were providing meals for school children. Um, nobody got money. Nobody got food stuff. And I was wondering, so why do they keep on telling that lie? But maybe the lady wasn't lying. Maybe it actually, well, not maybe, because it's obvious now that these things were shared to different states. Yeah. But the people who they shared it out to were not held accountable you know there should be visibility the people who gave these different states and rulers these things why didn't they keep their eye their eyes on it you know yeah. there should have been you know they should have asked for accountability like the foundation um, the foundation that joy and i were involved with that we helped distribute um palliatives here in the united kingdom mm -hmm. every day the foundation knew exactly who had come to come and collect something from us yeah. we made note of it we did the videos we were streaming live you know there was no way we could have been accused of appropriating anything for ourselves so as people were tasked with distributing um, palliatives, Joy and I took that responsibility and some other people, to be fair, there was more than not, both of us, we took that responsibility very, very seriously and made sure that we were transparent in what we were doing. So you can blame the people who were given the things and did not give it out, but blame also has to be apportioned to the people in power who gave them this mandate and did not follow it through to make sure that it was carried out you know joy what do you think i i, I mean you spot on you just said exactly what 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 i was going to say because at the end of the day people were put in charge of those things and they had somebody that they were reporting to so if if you had given an instruction for uh palliatives to be given to people and you, you didn't get any feedback. What are you doing? What are you doing? If you actually wanted these things to be distributed, there should be transparency. You will see, you will ask for the names and how it was done. There should be people put in charge. So don't blame people that you said you put in front to, to distribute. What are you yourself, you, the, the whoever uh, is in charge of it? What are you doing? Because these things were given to you to distribute. And it's a shame. Just see it as a wickedness, to be honest. It's a shame. Okay, I ladies, mean, I must warn you now that we've just got a man com uh, company. So there's a man in the house now. So you need to behave yourself now. <laughs> We've been behaving. You know that, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Of Bori Video, can you introduce yourself and make sure your camera 
it's showing like the lady right underneath you, yeah? So that it doesn't show your head only, yeah? Okay, <laughs> could you please introduce yourself, Uncle, yeah, please? Uh, am I okay now? Yeah, you're okay to a certain level, yeah? We can, we can accept Okay, like. uh, sorry, I'm coming a bit late. I think there is a little meeting holding here. Maybe there is a coup going on. I don't know. So I just have to put on it. <laughs> That's why I'm coming a bit late. So at least. <laughs> so good evening, everybody. Uh, my sisters, good evening to you. Well done. Mm -hmm. And uh, my name is Fatah Yogo Ribido. And um, I'm always um, passionate about uh, Nigeria. And uh, well, we all witness what has been happening in the past days. Unfortunately, well, this is the situation that we found ourselves, which nobody can help for now. And then I know the discussion uh, is about uh, the issue of um, the our greedy politicians, our greedy leaders, how they behave. So anyway, let me just uh, allow the moderator to um ask the question before i start to answer it okay my name is let's, Mr. You let's watch this video quickly yeah and then we we'll continue from there Plenty. 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 Food plenty. Our food plenty for A warehouse of 600 feet by 600 feet full of COVID-19 products was discovered today. Look at people struggling to pass. This, pro this incident has been going on since 7 a.m. As I speak with you, sources say the warehouse has not gone off. Palliative that we're supposed to be giving to people during the COVID-19 period was hidden away Nigerians were in, dying in a warehouse. And Nigerians and were dying of hunger and starvation. Look at this man struggling to survive. Yes. Can you imagine? Look at him. Something, for all of us. something that is supposed to be brought to his, where, they to his home. This thing for the past two hours. Look at him. Can you imagine? has more than enough. The, has more than enough. The Navy has collected their own. The armies have put their truck, collected their own. Immigration, custom, last man. And the warehouse has not gone half. The warehouse has not gone half. The warehouse has not gone half. Palliative for the poor. Stored away. This is October 20, 21st, 2020. Palliatives that were supposed to be shared in May were stored away. Some of the products are even expired. Look at how people are struggling. No, some of, you, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, see, see people are struggling. You see, you see, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Not for sale. Not for sale. They stored it. Look at it. Not for sale. They stored it. Wait. Wait. Let me see the pack. Now see. Look at it. COVID-19. Not for sale. The poor are suffering. And they stored it in a warehouse. Look at people passing through canal. Just to survive. Hunger in the land. Look at people struggling to survive. Suffering. Look at people. Bag of rice, forty thousand. Look at people. Very, very disheartening. Very, very painful. I don't even know what to say. Mr. Mm -hmm. Fatai, you haven't said anything about this. What's your talk? What's your initial reaction when you saw this? Well, it is actually of a very big shock. And uh, I'm not surprised. And uh, with, I mean, I think when I watched that program earlier on, I think it happened in, in a day. Uh, I think there is no issue state. Yeah. A similar scenario came from uh, Lagos when the other of Lagos Palace was actually uh, by the demonstrators. 
so we've got to show that we are actually is, is a, 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 a people whose destiny are actually in the hands of others well the reason why i said i'm not surprised is that um when we look at the political texture in nigeria what we are witnessing now is they say we're the democracy but the type of democracy we are playing in nigeria mm. especially in the south has put us in this dilemma a dilemma whereby some kickbackers some uh, godfathers are in control of our destiny well i'm not here to apportion blame to anybody but when you look back at the last election what really happened during the election we saw the manipulation we saw mass rigging we saw how towns combated the uh, county centers and this so that got to show us the pendulum of this crisis we had to see it actually shift it shifts to the direction of some further figures who wants to hold our destiny they want to hold this destiny because they want to be sure that they humiliate us they blackmail us into false support they are forcing us to for, to support them and i can assure you all these things are being kept because they want to use them as bribe to people who are going to be voted for them in 2023 during which time this thing might have expired this is real wickedness it will say wickedness of the highest order and even if in a very safe society those who are doing this they must be shot publicly because they are creating hunger their people many people have died because of this action can i, can I go have... to joy let me go to joy quickly yeah? uh maybe i need to introduce joy to you because you came late obviously uh today i'm not going to find you sister joy is the lady the beautiful lady uh with a great top and princess is the one with a with a joseph like uh top as well joseph like yes you know what i mean by joseph like <laughs> joseph is very nice <laughs> so uh this is uh, let's so let's go to sister joy uh i think she's frozen again look okay she's there but because i can oh, oh. are you there sister joy okay i think we might have lost her but she will i'm sure she will come back okay okay i think she's back again Sister Joy, yeah. or maybe I need to sing Joy Girl for you before you come back. <laughs> you know that song? Joy, Joy Girl. Hey, it's Joy Girl. Oh, but I wish she's going everywhere. <laughs> if I tell you how we used to sing that song, we'll, no? we'll run. Oh. No, don't tell us. Don't oh, tell she us. Wake up. She wake up. She wake up. Oh, our pastor must have been praying for her. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's <laughs> happening to my. Um... Maybe people My are trying internet. to call you or send you a message. Hey, we saw you on that thing. <laughs> you know, when people see you, instead of them waiting, nobody knows me. Yeah. Okay, nobody knows me. Great. So Great. we saw this warehouse with the king of Lagos, and people. Are you telling me there's no whistleblower in Nigeria? They don't do whistleblowing in Nigeria. <sighs> Joy, are you telling me there's no what's your thought? There's no whistleblower, there's nobody that wants to report and grasp these people up and say, Look, there's so much food in so 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 place. The, the, the thing is that, um, they all know what they are doing, I and mean, then this is a calculated uh attempt to just uh, you know, I mean, like they are just we have in an insensitive government i mean it's sheer wickedness like i said um they know what they are doing they've kept it for themselves and uh, i don't think they have any any intention of distributing it to the oh, oh, um, hold on you said the they kept it for to themselves is the joint what are you going to yeah, do with I think it? So. yeah well it's christmas time coming do use it as hampers or uh, distribute it to their families and the military people and all that stuff because i mean how can you keep what are you keeping it for why keep it and most of most of all these things are going to expire some of them have even expired from what people are saying so if this it is when was it when uh, in lagos in lagos the foundation that we worked with 
here in London. They did a they did a fantastic job in the whole every every region in Lagos. Bought things, and the, the Lagos state government had all those things stored in their warehouse, and they did nothing. So what were they keeping it for? COVID at that time was in June, July. There was lockdown in Lagos, and people were suffering. No food. And they just they, they paid their I mean, come on, they know what they are doing. I don't think they had any intention of giving it out to them. <laughs> the the problem know. is it does happen, it has happened. Who should we blame? The people keeping it, the people that gave it to them. The governor of Lagos State knows something like this must have happened. Because he cannot say. Mm -hmm. He, he, he wasn't aware that it wasn't being distributed. We saw the one that was given in the not being distributed, Sister uh, Princess. Yes. Was, was, who should we blame before we go to the consequence, the justice they need to face? Who should you blame? You've got to blame everybody who is involved. So you've got to. Um, You've got to blame the people who um, received the materials, got it together and everything. Because if I remember correctly, I think uh, people external or organizations external to Nigeria did send in things, you know, as palliatives mm -hmm. and everything or money or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said earlier, you split it amongst the states and then you don't ask mm -hmm. any questions you're not seeing any videos or anything no. and you are not doing anything about it then um, whoever they gave that responsibility to be that responsibility to in the state whoever they gave the responsibility to it might be one person it might be more than one person obviously that person cannot distribute a, that such a huge warehouse full of whatever you know but when were they planning to do it didn't yeah. they know it was still there you know so anybody who um was supposed to be involved with the distribution from the top to the bottom all of them should be held accountable all of them should be held accountable irrespective of whether they were in the state or not like that lady who kept on saying yes we are giving things to people in nigeria we have been giving we've given palliatives to all the poorest households we've gone to all the areas in all states in nigeria was what she was saying you know nobody ever asked her okay show us the statistics if for for once they show us you know yeah. technological evidence everybody goes live right now in anything you are doing everybody you know they immediately go live show it on facebook and everything you know so it's all the way from the top and it's not restricted to the state it's mm -hmm. it's a national thing people at national yeah. level top top level all of them are to blame all of them are to blame Okay, everybody has to share from the blame. Can I say okay. something? They said they feed school kids. They said they're giving money out to people. Mr. Uncle, you know, do you think they actually gave money out and the money didn't get filtered down the, down the line? Now, it's got to show that uh, even those who sent the messages across the world that uh, money were given out is going to show that they, they, they were not they were not lying so which means that even millions or billions that have been sent to nigeria are being kept in private pockets which is typical of the way our leaders behave so and uh, the point i just want to raise here is that um, there should be a way to approach our politics because this problem now is being pained to the southwest in southwest that had, there, there was one in calabar as well i was told well 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 eh, they, they must be having some political tones that is though that that is in power are trying to make sure that they conserve those things so that it will work to their own advantage so what really concerns me now is what is happening because we have to consider our culture, our tradition, our background as a people in Southwest. 
So I'm really more concerned about Southwest. And we know the tactics of those that are ruling us. What they do to make sure that they subjugate, they, they, they subjugate us and they put us under their feet. And that is through what? Through divide and conquer, divide and rule. Picking up those that are, they know are weak among us, giving them power and influence and their evil security so that they can step on the others. So when we look at what is happening now, all these things are being given to those type of people. And let us look back at what has been happening in the past days. Children who are on the street, these youths, they are in hunger. Graduates, master degree holders, being made to be Okada riders. Even if those who have the opportunity to ride Okada, they are, they are, they are influential among them. Because where are they going to even buy the Okada? Maybe they rent it. Youth that we should be using their intelligence to build our nation. That we should be using them in technological breakthrough in every way. Imagine what's happening to Nigeria across the world. We are building the entire world in every aspect of life. We are building really influence in, in the, mo the, the most popular uh, spread across the world, people in the entire world, are the Southwest people. Go to any who looks at looks at corners of the entire world, Yoruba are there, building the nations, making good names, and see what is happening to our root. Rotney, very, very disgraceful. And let me tell you the strength that we have in the entire world today. And the reason why I'm saying this is because our destiny has been put in the hand of some few who don't have the interest of people at heart. This is the problem that we are having. The interest of or the interest that they, they are pursuing is their own political interest, and they don't mind even to sell the entire people for a penny. This is the problem. So those who are being given that, that 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 duty of distribution are people who don't have the interest of people at heart. So what you want Mr. to do, Mr. 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 Let me let me yes. stop you there. We're looking at the whole thing scenario. We don't want to look at southwest, southeast, or southwest, northwest, exactly. or northeast, mm -hmm. because okay. this is a a, a countrywide issue. This this the, the people in the north get the palliative. They give it to the their point, people. The wait, point, wait, the point, wait, 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 wait. the point, the point, the point. The point I'm raising is this: get the palliative. They give it to their people. They give. They even give the money. We saw money being distributed. You see, this is the Am point. You have to know, you have to understand me and understand the points that I'm making. Be it southwest or southeast, where these things are so endemic, the deprivation of people of what they they should have. We the the point I'm trying to make is that there is a, a there is there there are attempts being made to make sure that they create some influential people whom they are going to be using against their against against the pop the general populace. This is what is happening. I'm only using Southwest as an example because I don't want to be alleging other other states of what they are doing because actually the two evidences that we have seen today have been both in Nede and in Lagos. So if by the time I mean if we see evidence from South East that is happening, then we can spread our comments or our uh, you know uh, reservations or maybe our, our criticism towards towards those states. But what we saw today were two major main main main, main buildings start with palliative that should be distributed in may between april may june which were not done so that's the reason why i'm using southwest as just okay. a point of let me let me point this one out to you quickly they find okay. in lagos they find in Ede, they find in lori they find in Calabar. okay, okay Calabar. okay that's what we know so far even okay. in lagos they find in about lagos they find another one oh. in the hmm. so and if they get to lagos like that it means they give, they must have given it to all the states. Uh, yeah. Which because means they that see their own share in the north. Let's go exactly. to Princess quickly. Princess, do you think it's a country white team or is it's a pocket white team? It's a pocket team. Sorry, what do you mean is a pocket team? Is it you mean I could refer here it, and there or is a country white team? It, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, it is a countrywide thing. Okay. Okay. Now, the reason why we are seeing things, or why we are seeing, if uh, well, and this is the only time I'm going to make um, reference to Southwest and blah blah. I have no intention of being divisive and dividing that country. Okay. I I have no intention of trying to do north against south or against uh -huh. east or against west. 
it's all over nigeria mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it has come to the forefront lagos it has started in lagos because of the protest and what happened on the 20th on tuesday the 20th that was what angered people enough to go and start gunning for government buildings or powerful people's buildings and things like that and then based on that happening that probably got people in other states thinking hang on if they sent palliatives over there and they've been saying that they gave to nigeria we probably have i have no doubt whatsoever that in the next few days we are going to see this happening state by state by state by state all over nigeria right now the protest that is going on is happening in nigeria right now because they want one nigeria so in the in any conversation we are having please 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 and please let's not try to you know make it i i do not want to have a conversation that involves tribalism or religion i want to have a conversation that talks about one nigeria so as far as i'm concerned this happened everywhere okay because we you know it we have southerners live, living up north. We yes. have no northerners living up yes. south. Yes. You know, so we have you know people all over the place. Yeah. yeah, you know, so it affected the northerners when they were if they were going to distribute in Lagos, in Calabar, in Oshun State, in Ilorin, they were going to distribute to the southerners as well as the northerners as long as you resided in there yes. it wasn't something that was given to indigenous of a state no. it was no. given for residents of a state mm -hmm. you know so it affected people who were also not from the southwest oh. it was a national thing my wow. opinion wow it, it, it is not just your opinion that is exactly what happened because when we look at the whole thing scenario of what happened here and there it, it's not the funniest thing, like you said, is in the next few days, we're going to see more people. I wouldn't be surprised if the residents of this state is going about with such life in mind and say, hey, such life, let's look at these big buildings they lock up for some time now. What is in there? And they will find it everywhere in Nigeria because there will be some big bastard idiots, sorry for my French, that will be keeping this thing. But the reason is what I don't know. Joy, why will someone give so much stuff? Is it because of this young man I want to show you? Is it because they are just like this man? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's the new Nigeria. When I was growing up, Nigeria was uh, totally different. Uh, uh, now it's all about me, myself, me, me, me. and I alone. So it's it's, it's um, people are they, are they are greedy now, especially the people in power. They are insensitive. Um, they don't have. I just feel they don't have a heart because clearly what we are seeing now is just beyond human comprehension. Yeah, it, it's just beyond. I mean, I, I mean, on Tuesday I was really. I mean, it was whole. It was horrifying. I was really shocked that people can be so heartless. I mean, it's uh, it's ridiculous. It's I think it's more than being greedy. You know, it, wickedness of the highest order. It is. Um, I mean, it is shameful. I mean, the 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 international community that gave this palliative, they are seeing all this. I mean, I'm just ashamed to be a Nigerian. To be honest. Because it's not just Nigerian that this thing was given to, it was given to all other African countries. So why should Nigeria be different? Oh. Why? Okay, let's because go to we, Mr. We, 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 let's go we, to Mr. We, we, again. Mr. Okonjido, are you ashamed as well to be a Nigerian when it comes to things like this happening? Well, the point is I'm not ashamed of being a Nigerian. And uh, actually, we have always have the passion that we want a Nigeria that uh, the, that one can be proud of. 
But uh, one thing I want us to really know tonight is that uh, I am a very realistic person. And uh, I'm a journalist. And uh, I know what... When I try to be a bit uh, divisive, I know the reason why. It's not that you, nobody can say they love the general more than I do. But politically, I understand a lot of things that many may not understand. And when I'm trying to explain tonight that there is divide and conquer that a part of the nation is imposing on the others and that will make them to be under their feet, it's, I'm not trying. I'm only being realistic. No, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at it. It's not that we understand it. We understand it. It's either we understand it or we don't understand it. So whatever opinion I'm putting across, across tonight, nobody can prove that they love the drama than I do. But I'm a real, realistic person. And I know what has been happening. It is very shameful that this is happening in Nigeria. But I'm trying to pin it to what I would call the political father God, the, the, the political f f fathers that we, we that they, they created and are imposing, you know, on us. And the message this has been sent into the entire world and to many of us across the world, even in Nigeria, is that everybody in Nigeria is bad, which is not so. We have good leaders. We have leaders who are passionate about the people who want better, better life for the people, who want free education for the people, who want the youth to be employed. But these are people that are not being involved in governance simply because they won't com com compromise on the, all these sort of behaviors. So if I'm trying to put my message across, not because I attend the religion, not because you, you love the general more than I do, but realistically, I know what has played up my, my, my journalistic journey as, I mean, spanned over 35 years. I mean, I started my career in Punch 1982. So put that together. So I understand a lot of things. So it, it, you can't tell me that the, the Nigeria is being treated, the things in Nigeria is, is happening fairly. We understand what has been happening. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that. Okay, I might belong to it, but the realistic life is. Let us look at what is what has been happening in Nigeria. Has there been a development in Nigeria? Has there been any progress in Nigeria? If not, a say Nigeria was the third largest oil exporting country in the entire world. At a stage, you are four, five, six. Right now, we should be thinking about a nation that is rivaling the you you know the best country in the world. But where are we today? Nothing is happening. And charity begins at home. Then I have to look back at my own route. What is happening there? So this is what, what this is the reason why it's not because I hate anybody in Nigeria. So if we are pretending to, oh, I love this and, and yeah, your people are suffering and you are no, you have no shame about it. And there is a unequal distribution of 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 of, of, of jobs, no unequal distribution of posts. And uh, even uh, the entire security system is uh, is dominated by a certain tribe. There are questions that, that should be asked. Are we in a fair society? So the reason why this is happening is because those who are over who, who, who over who oversee the country try to pre to, to predate on others. They elect people and create divide and rule so that they can use those they, 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 they create to pass over others. This is what is happening. This is, this is the reason why all these I mean, why when you look about the issue of Nigeria, no law, no there is no rule of law. There is no punitive measures against people who are, who are who are doing these sort of things. So we are, we are in a gangland. Nigeria is not, it's not real. We are not a nation. We have to be realistic. Any nation, country that, is, that, that has nationhood must be able to demonstrate passion for the people, care, in head, let's, in let's, education, let's, everything. Let's All these things are this in Nigeria. So if this happens, we should not be surprised. So I'm Mr. not ashamed Mr. about it. Let's, it's normal. Let's look at it this way. For a very long time. Mr. Ogunbido, let's look at it this way, right? Nigeria might be bad. It might have bad leaders. But the issue here is not the government alone. Because we want to pinpoint some faults tonight, right? The federal government gave palliative to states. The people they gave it to in the state decided to hijack it and not distribute it. The Yoruba elders... The Hebrew elders, they didn't complain that you are distributing food and ask some few questions. There are some elders in Yoruba land and Igbo land and in the northern land, in the northern states, that have access to the government and say, oh, hold on, boy, you're distributing palliative in that area. What about the one for this area? 
If he's here, the journalists will ask. Am I right, sisters and brothers? The journalists will ask to say, what is going on? So, uh -huh. nobody asked. And the government mm -hmm. gave the team, okay. they gave money, they gave so much things, but they didn't see this team being distributed. And they're not supposed to ask. Okay. Did somebody call ministers of internal affairs? The state governors, these police officers, if it happens here, are you telling me that the Metropolitan Police will not investigate it and go and arrest the king or the governor? Did you remember the interview Boris Johnson, the police interview Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister sometimes ago? Did you remember that when Tony Blair was there, his son, was arrested in the police station and he has to go there by himself to go and bail him. Can that ever happen in Nigeria? What, about, what well, happened to our whistleblowers? What happened to the people working there? Mr. Mojeto, let us look at this uh, from this angle. Yeah. Who are the main stakeholders in those states? Where all these things have been actually distributed? Why didn't the federal government itself oversee the distribution of this to the people? How, At least, where, how many places would they be? Let's give it. Let's give it. I think Sister Joy is smiling. Sister Joy is smiling. Sister Joy, okay. what's your take on this one? What's your take? My take is, I mean, if the federal government is giving it to the governor, uh, the, gov uh, the state government to do the state government, uh, we have commissioners there. We have head of services and all that stuff. They should be held accountable. And then the governor should, at the end of the day, find out how it was distributed, who and who got. We want to see a record, a list. The people in the, in the governor, uh, governor's office that, that should be assigned to do that. What are they talking about? SSG and all that stuff. What is their job at the end of the day? What is their job? Ministers. They, they have ministers of these ministers, and there are so many ministers, I don't even know. The, the, but the don't forget that we are, we, are, we, are, we are in political games, and they are playing yeah, the games so, against so, the so, so they should be uh, 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 accountable for it. And at the end of the day, the, 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 the federal government will want to know how it was distributed. We want to see how did you do who and who got the money and all that. There should be a, a, a record of all these things. Videos. Sister uh, Princess, are you saying yes. the system in Nigeria is complete has completely failed? Because there should be a system. There are some people that took the, 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 the palliative there. There's so many people that knows about the palliative. Of course. Right? If they give, for example, I live in, in, in Beckenham in London, if they give the people in Beckenham some, some food, palliative, and it doesn't get shared down the line, there will be someone from Greater London Authority that will complain and say, hey, when was this food distributed? There will be the driver that brought the food there and said, I've taken XYZ. They will even go to the police and say, I've taken XYZ to, the to this warehouse. But we didn't see it being distributed. There's, there's a system that is working. That is working. So, are you telling me that the system in Nigeria has completely failed everybody? That they didn't find this problem in one state? They probably find it in two, three, four more states by the end of the day? And then, the lady that was saying, ask your government, ask your traditional leaders, because we've given it to them. Mm -hmm. Is that what she's supposed to say? Or they're supposed to call the hygiene and said, we're giving X, Y, Z to this person. Because I remember people were complaining that they were not giving this food in the south and in the south and in some areas, even in the north. So, princess, what is going on? Are we completely a failed state or what is happening we we are a, we are a failed state 
And the reason why I'm going to say that, I have already mentioned about the fact, I've already touched upon the fact that these things were distributed to this, the different states and whoever was responsible for allo making those allocations never followed it up. But what do I know? I don't know. I wasn't there. What I expected and is still lacking Today wasn't the first day that we saw that there was something in the warehouse. As at yesterday, we saw that we knew that things had been stored in a warehouse that was supposed to be allocated to the residents of that state. Yeah. Nobody in those states who has come out in Lagos to come and explain why those were inside the warehouse or to express shock that these things were in the warehouse were still in the warehouse months later yeah. nobody has come out to come and say anything in those states so far where these things have been discovered you know so it's something that they are used to getting things which they are supposed to distribute and deciding not to distribute it but keep it for themselves and stuff like that you know maybe somebody might have good intentions of blowing the whistle if you were resident in nigeria do you really think it is a good idea for you to be blowing any whistle <laughs> when you have family members and stuff like that mm. i live in the united kingdom i rarely go to nigeria i go very occasionally mm. nevertheless i'm very careful about what i talk about when it comes to the nigerian government why mm. because experience is the best teacher i don't have to experience it i can learn from somebody else's experience and i have seen people travel here from england down to nigeria their name has been recognized on the passenger manifest. So they are gladly waiting for them when they arrive over there. And as soon as they get there, they whisk them away to go and teach them a lesson or two. Say, who do you think you are? You're coming to come and be saying this, that, that, or the other. So that is why I keep my mouth shut about some things that I could put on and everything because I've got it because it's not just about me. Mm. I'm thinking about my family members as well. Mm. And particularly because I don't live there. By the time I go there and they grab me and everything, before the British government is trying to fight for its citizen, me, you know, it's going to be hard. We are reading the stories of, we were told our brother was in Akure police station. We went there. They say he's not there. They say we should go to this office. We've even seen the one where the woman said she saw her son. They told her, it's not your son you saw at this police station. <laughs> her own son that she gave birth to and raised for how many years? And that's how the boy eventually, they found him in a mortuary. Wow. You know, so when you talk about whistleblowing, then it, are we going to say that in government and everything there is no righteous men? There are righteous people, but they are in the minority. And that's why they, or maybe they might even, how, how do we even, how do we even know that the governors in these states were told that these palliatives were there? We don't know who owns the buildings. I don't know who owns the building that they found the, the things in, in Lagos, in Ekpe or whatever, in the Lorin, in the different places. I don't know who owns the, the, the buildings. So maybe the person they give it to the divide that has that building and kept it and did not tell anybody. I don't know. Okay, you know, okay. I, I, I really can't say. You know, but, 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 but whoever initially gave out these things, gave to states, yeah. you know, in some states, they gave a little thing. In some states, because I know that up north, when I was talking to somebody in Abuja during the um, pandemic, when they were really locked down and everything, um, the person was saying, oh, they are giving to only the northern people. So even though you reside there, they are giving to the indigents as opposed to the residents. Hmm. And maybe they are giving 1,000 Naira or 2,000 Naira. It wasn't like if they were giving you money, they were giving you anything that was going to be life-changing. Yeah. You know, so some people might have given and given very, very little. And some might have decided not to give at all.
Hmm. It all boils down to greed. It all boils down to absolute power corrupting absolutely. You know, traditional rulers like my um, sister Joy has been talking. She's mentioned, you know, what happened to the traditional rulers, you know, and stuff like that. Even the moderator himself has said it, that this lady came out and said they gave things to traditional rulers and everything and stuff like that. Yeah. You can see that um, people took out their frustration on one of the policies. I don't know if it's only one of the policies that they took mm -hmm. their frustration yeah. out on. Yeah. But if you go to places and you really talk to people, you see that they might be disenchanted with their own traditional rulers as well. And given the opportunity, where, 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 you know, my, where my parents come from in Nigeria, they've actually kicked out the ruler and they've ap appointed a regent over there the youths decided they had had enough because he decided to go and sell the the community land and he's not in that village that he's supposed to be ruling anymore as we speak yeah the youths decided we have had enough enough my village is very very small so of course it did not make make news although i did see an article somewhere to be fair I did see a write-up somewhere because I remember sending it to my sister and she was horrified. So this news has gotten to the point where people like you who are in England can see it, you know. So the change is happening now. We are upset that it took what happened, you know, but, you know for this to happen. But, but for the, that happening, we wouldn't... In, nobody over here in their wildest imagination thought that any such building existed mm -hmm. and if you had seen the one for lagos you probably would have thought that it was supposed to be for five states or ten states or something you wouldn't even have thought that that was for only lagos mm -hmm. then you see the one that is in Loring is plenty like that as i mean it's, a, it's like it's a slap in the face those of us here in the united kingdom with the little that we did not have we were trying to be sending money to people in nigeria so they can eat hmm. people who have never met in my life i see them crying out for help on facebook hmm. and i'm busy trying to be getting money across to them and all i don't know them if i see them i'm not going to recognize them never met them in my life before but hmm. every little i could do to help and somebody sat down and kept that enough to hmm. open many supermarkets hmm. there is god though like patient jonathan said before and like i said let us sit down and watch over the next few days mm. and see whether these people have a conscience and if any of those people are currently watching this program or somehow or the other this program you know somebody sends them the link or something and they are able to watch it what I'm going to say to you is if you are one of those people who was given responsibility for making sure that, you know, you collected the palliative and you were supposed to distribute it and you haven't, before the youths in your, in your town or your state come there and discover the place for themselves, why don't you just respect yourself right now and do the right thing, especially when they are busy putting curfews all over the place? There's 24 hour coffee here, there's 48 hour coffee here. You cannot go out from this time to this time and stuff like that. Do the right thing. People are going to be hungry again now. So do the right thing. If you are one of those people that has been hiding, if you are part of it, it it's not only one person that hid that thing, it took more than one. So you people should go and look for where your conscience is, wherever you dug it and buried it in go and bring it out from there you might ask yourself why did these people keep these things the people who, ke who kept these things they probably have enough money they most definitely were not hungry during the lockdown they were not hungry but bill gates as rich as he is has not said i don't want to make money anymore oprah winfrey has not decided i don't want to make money anymore you can never have too much money when you're a millionaire you want to be a billionaire so these people have and they want to make money from it it's all about money greed like we said like not having a conscience being inhuman yeah that's what it is yeah
Thank you very much. Yeah, let's go back to Fatai Obunibido quickly because uh, Fatai, well, do they need to establish a system of whistleblower in Nigeria for things to work so that you can report things like the crime stoppers used to do in England? You see, my opinion about Nigeria has actually uh, disappointed so many people because I can't deceive. I can't deceive you. I've lost hope about that country. No, we are not talking I mean, about your hope. Yeah, we're not yeah, talking yeah. about how you feel. We're talking about a, a specific situation. This is how our leaders are behaving. We we don't want to talk about. Uh, or uh, Biafra, or Odudua, or Arewa, or Mirabel. We don't want to go there tonight. We're looking at the greediness of our leaders. When you are 60 years of age, <laughs> and nobody can paint down a real success that you have made in life, mm. are you really worth living as a human being? If the country is 60 years of age, and we are not talking about a, a internationally handed over palette for the internet to vote people, and you as a leader have been holding those things, and then we have no probity in nation, no rule of law. Are you telling what nothing can work out in Nigeria? Nigeria is a spent force. That country completely has broken down. So I don't know what to say. Because is this what you should be, should be talking about now? When the entire world is going, in, 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 I mean, technologically, as in, in, as in the jet that we are in, so the country has completely broken down. We see what has been happening. The security system, nothing is happening. In terms of education, nothing is happening. In terms of medical services, nothing is happening. And thank God, many, many of us who are on this program, we are living in this country. Can we now say that, say that Nigeria is a nation? Can we describe Nigeria as a country? So when I give my opinion, it's not that I don't want to be sentimental. Like uh, Princess said earlier on, I don't want, I mean, it is true, they monitor people, they want to make sure that they, they oppress their way, they arrive in Nigeria, but we cannot all keep silent, we have to be talking. I wouldn't say because people, somebody is monitoring me, I wouldn't say the truth. Only the truth can set us free, so this is the plan that we have. Nothing, what, what has been, what, tell me, what has been working in Nigeria? So are we not talking about whether some leaders should be responsible, should they be taught to be responsible? Or should they be taught to be transparent in their actions? Is the, do you have to tell people, please go and distribute what God the government has given to you? We have lost all values in Nigeria. And it's not because people have, we are not, not that we are so bad, but because of the way we have been treated. I was trying to make my point earlier on that there are divide and conquer. Those people who are stakeholders in these states are people who are being handed over these palliatives and they hold their allegiance to the federal government and they are in the minority. So when my sister said earlier on that uh, there are some good people in Nigeria, but in the, the bad people are in the minority, the good people are they are being denied by the power that be. The value we grew up in when we were growing up, I mean so you'll be your brother's keepers. We have all social services, we take care of our family, take care of everybody. But when you are being denied the right life, when all guys ravaging your life, you can't even when now let's come to think of it. Nigeria's situation is is called itself is is, 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 is artificial. When a, a bag of rice is selling for twenty five thousand naira, and then the minimum wage wage is thirty thousand, does that pal? Does it does, does, that, does that meet? Well, you have to take care of your children's school. You have to. Sponsor. So what we are talking about has got nothing to do whether it's building to do or whether it's Biafra. We are talking generally about the breakdown of law, the breakdown of order, the breakdown of, 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 of humanity. So the country is it's already it's meant for, it, it, Nigeria is it, it's, it's fake. It's a farce. What are we talking about? So I, I face reality. I don't deceive myself. I don't want to be quick. I don't want to be to impress anybody. I don't want to be diplomatic about about, about you, my use of words. Because not, what can you be proud? You are now saying, I may be proud, I may be proud to be a Nigerian. Why should I be proud to be a Nigerian? What, has, what good has ever come from Nigeria? So this is the reality. Not because I'm not any political ambition or whether I'm campaigning for anybody, but we're talking about the realistic, the, the, what we are seeing on ground. Tell me, what the, why, are, why, why is Princess so scared of going to Nigeria? Why? Why am I scared of going to Nigeria? If Nigeria is not much, should we be scared? No! 
We have to be realistic. It's not about the sentiment about being to be passionate about, about, about being being a, a, a Yoruba person about being Igbo. Nigeria has failed. Then okay. I, I, I have, have a friend, Mr. Okudo. I have a friend, Lawrence Astro. About five years, four, five, six years ago, he went to Nigeria. He's supposed to spend about two weeks. On getting to the airport, he was picked up from the airport. Take to the uh, uh, the the notorious uh, prison in Nigeria. Spent six months there, and after six months, they take him from there straight to the airport <laughs> and, kick, and kick him out. And he has to because his ticket he, he lost his return ticket already, so he has to find money at the airport for him to come back with. And everybody in Nigeria didn't know he was in Nigeria. Nobody knew. That's the that's the shame of it. So, the people who've done this, what do you think, in your own opinion, Sister Joy, the government should do to stop things like this from happening again, Sister Joy? Well, they should they should go back to the drawing board, look at where they went wrong, do an investigation on where it went wrong and start again they know what to do it's not that they don't know what to do they know what to do in nigeria they know how to distribute things we have a lot of intelligent people in nigeria nigeria we are not dumb we know what we are doing so there should be accountability there should be transparency that is what they should put in place accountability and transparency should be put in place because we know what to do Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, sister, uh, princess, princess, uh, yeah, as a traditional ruler, the Oba of Lagos, do you think he should be jailed for this, or do you think he should be impeached? Uh, do, uh, is it possible to impeach an Oba, a traditional ruler? Yes, okay, I don't know. I don't know. Um, when it comes to, um, do I think that he should be impeached or anything? Uh, like I said, I um, as far as I am aware, <laughs> we're supposed to be talking about the palliatives. Were any palliatives found in the Oba's palace? Yes. If no palliatives, uh, were, 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 were um, palliatives found in the Oba's palace? Yes. And money. Money in the coffin. Oh yes, I know that he had money in the co in a coffin. That money was uh, palliative money. Was... Why will you keep money in a coffin? What nonsense is this? Ah. That's where he wants to keep it now. That's his bank. <laughs> how many? No, think, think think about it. How many people? If you saw, if you went into somebody's house and you saw a coffin, would you go to one? Look, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's his bank. Oh. He's not his traditional, remember. He doesn't do things like we would normally in the Western way. Go and keep it inside bank. He kept it inside coffee so that his ancestors will watch over the money. What's your issue? Yeah. Yeah, he can. <laughs> so I, I, I cannot say whether that was palliative money in there. Um I when you know when it comes to the upper of uh, Lagos, I ain't gonna say nothing. Because as far as I know. He wasn't given um, palliatives and told, oh, distribute. If he was given at all, then he was probably supposed to distribute in his palace and maybe around his area, if his area does not have an, is it Oluomo? The Oluomos of areas, maybe they, if they had given it to them, then the people would have, the Oluomos would have distributed to the people in the area, you know? So maybe if I want to blame the upper of Lagos, I'll blame him if they gave him palliative and it was supposed to be for wherever his area is and he didn't pass it on to the Oluomo but kept it for himself, then maybe I'll bl blame him. But right now, I don't have enough information. I don't feel I've got enough information, you know, to be able to make, to pass judgment on it. Okay. Guys, I really want to thank you for joining me tonight on this program. Uh, I hope we've been able to educate our listeners at home. Mr. Okubido, your last word before we go for the day, sir. Well, uh, let me just... Uh, try and uh, contribute a bit more about your last question whether the 
Oba should be hoisted or whether it should be forgiven. First of all, we have let us look at how he got there. What influence really got him onto that throne? Is he the one that has been spiritually chosen by this by, by, by the gods of Lagos State? Or was he actually a political anointed uh, one for those whose interests are more uh, in Lagos than the interests of the generality? So this is the problem that we are having. So, well, uh, let me just uh, tell our youths, please, I beg you, enough of the destruction. The only thing that can give you valid points to the uh, to, to the entire world is if you remain less violent please stop it and let your word be heard by the world don't engage in violence because it doesn't add more to the value of your protest and um, i know that you have points to draw you are you, not, you need to draw the attention of the entire world about your problems and the challenges and do that peacefully and let the entire world recognize you and give you kudos that you have done well and let the people that you are protesting against them recognize you and not blackmail you that you've resorted to violence. Please, youth, be more sensible and let your message get across without any violence. That is just my simple advice to, to them. Okay, let's go to Princess. Uh, I'm going to do it that way. So let's go to Princess. Princess, last word before we go tonight. Last words before we go tonight, I'm going to say to the youths and the um, residents in Nigeria, um, we may not be based in Nigeria, we feel your pain. Um, you started off very well. We, uh, uh, we apologize for the fact that um, you felt pushed to, you were pushed, the whole world saw it, that you were pushed to the level at which you are at. But it's time for you to um, try and calm down and not be running on those sort of emotions, you know. Organize yourselves, structure yourselves and everything. Um, when you are looting, you know, unfortunately, um, there's looters and there's um, you who really have um, Nigeria's interests at heart. Um, the, the palliative thing is the palliative thing but we also have people who are going and just looting from hard-working businessmen and everything which really isn't right and we are hoping that such looters or people who have that looting mentality you know will not if the youths are successful in what they are doing right now we hope that those with the thieving greedy looting mentality do not find their ways in you know in amongst them um, um and overshadow them because that's what brought us to where we are right now there's a number of people who went in there with good intentions and everything but they find out they are in the minority so they get oppressed if i you know let's put it um let's say for example that there's a governor of state a and they have good intentions they want to give out the palliatives there's 35 other states over there where the people in charge of palliative want to keep palliative they are going to shut the, the governor of state a down and say uh what righteous man we are not giving why do you want to show us up if you go and start giving the people will ask us where is our own they'll quash that one you know so we pray for the future we pray for the success of what is going on right now because people all over the world including non-nigerians are lending their voices and everything we hope that because this has happened all those donors are then going to you know go back to the, the people who they handed over their donation to and 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 and, and ask you know for a breakdown of how it was done so that is what my hope is that the people who the donors are going to go back to those people who they donated it to and then those ones will then have no option but to go back to the states and then hold them accountable that is my last word that's my hope regarding the palliatives because there's still palliatives out there in warehouses and they were given for the people they need to get to the people and we'd like them to get to the people 
from the government not because our youths went there and seized it our youths should not have to go and hunt these places down break in take and distribute and you know and do what was supposed to be done right from the beginning so let's just hope that the donors you know do their bit to make sure that this gets to where it's intended they are the ones who i think can put pressure right now more than um anybody in nigeria because people in nigeria sat back and let it happen for months you know great yeah thank you very much sister joy before you give your own last statement there's some few things i want to actually refer to our listeners tonight one of those things i want to talk about is number one if you are in nigeria please don't damage anything the youth i know i've spoken to some few of you and you said to me you are not damaging anything is the odlum or the fulani that came from up not come and damage thing so that they can cause trouble and you even assure me that it's not the evils damaging property in lagos because they don't there's no need for them to damage property in lagos they live in lagos they're part of lagos they have all their lives in lagos so I was told that it's not even the the the, the youths, it's not even the Igbo that are damaging properties in Lagos. So please, if anybody is still attempting to damage things in the in in any part of Nigeria, please don't do it. Again, for those of you who are in a foreign country abroad that have residents back home, and you have a gate man. Some gate men have used your house as a storage for gun ammunition. We find some few out. Sister Joy, did you did you just raise your elbow? Because we find some few. We find about I think we have about twenty nine within the last two days that they've used their house because their their or guy is not in the house. They actually store ammunition guns in the houses which is a shame so you need to investigate when you want to investigate don't leave it too long you need to investigate it tomorrow so that they don't move it out right send your megad or the washman send them on an errand and get other member family to go and check it and keep an eye around don't go there alone don't send one person there send a group of people there if you need help on that one you can contact me i will give you assistance to go because we've rendered some few assistance in the last three days to they, they've been using houses as ammunition dump which is a shame we don't know what is coming but whatever is coming we pray that god we we, we take bad things away from our land that is what we want to pray for then again tomorrow there's a protest in london tomorrow about the killing of those people uh downing street they're meeting at parliament square at 10 o'clock to go to downing street for about half past 10. i don't know how long that is gonna be for look at my t-shirt pray for our youth wow the candle a hand holding the candle there so we're still selling t-shirt obviously so if you still want t-shirt if you want this one or you want the white one uh we have some soki t-shirt as well uh it's a shame it's far from me i would have love to show it to you but some of them have seen it on me i might be there tomorrow i might not be there but we will try and see what we can do tomorrow i want to thank everybody everybody and a lady uh uh if we have volunteered that every time there's a protest we will have a big tv at the venue so we can stream whatever we're doing we can stream it there live so i want to thank you she just sent me a message now but i will make sure if you as soon as i come up this line i will call you back so that we can talk about it and the logistic behind it um that is that so i will not go unless i speak to sister so she can give her last word and the good thing is that you can actually include your last word about this uh guy that guarding people's house so which is going to be an extra bonus you have more to talk about now but I won't give you two hours. I will only give you about 10 minutes to give your last word on the program, please. Thank you, Sister John. Okay. Um, we've said, uh, most of you have said most of the things. Uh, just want to stress that uh, the youth should calm down. 
and let this rain and um, we should stop destroying people's uh, uh, properties the people's shops and all that because these people are are also struggling they are not they are not responsible for any part of what is going on they know nothing about the palliative they know nothing about uh, um, government policies and all the things that the politicians are doing so they should please stop destroying uh, people's uh, properties and their livelihood uh, let peace reign just sit down and watch and uh, see what is going to come out because the whole world is uh, aware of what is going on so um, they should uh, come so that yeah, the people that have lost their lives will not uh, be in vain thank you very much my sister i really love your short summing up there guys we are not we we're, we're not going away completely but this is where i'm going to stop the program tonight before you go before we go there's a video i want you to listen to is the speech by the the excellency the governor of Lagos state the shame is that he didn't talk about this palliative team at all which is very surprising because it's a, it's a national issue it's a it's a, it's a it's a big problem for this that has happened now uh nobody should do without talking about it nobody should do without talking about it and this is what the governor has to say i hope you don't take any offense in what they have to say thank you unfortunately it's in yoruba i didn't realize that before so i might not play everything uh, no buying sorrow. Mufe Koko Fitoality. I want to tell you, Bobo Rubudion. Every problem in Lagos, Ni Luko, has been going on lower, lower now, Ni Bugua Bibua, in all the areas of Lagos. I Ojen Conti Obami Nino Pupoje. It's something that brought all of sorts to my mark. I want Odowa, that our youth, Tom Berry, that is started. Ipologo to protest that they are we protesting ki for Adawo, Bobo, um, Ashimashi, Tawolopa, that they want to, to put an end to the police brutalities and all the others. We thought he better Bobo, Bobo Dion. So we started this protest. Dawo, Ashimashi, Olopa. Osija, no, what police brutality. More, we are in support of it. When they started, when it was peaceful. Komilo, the only thing that surprised me, I'm not happy about it, is that the oblongs and Togri, the people that doesn't love you, that doesn't love the government, since yesterday, you've been burning houses, shops, buses, banks, and government banks. The killing police. The police have been killing them back. It brings sorrows to my heart. The one that happens in Lekki, three days ago, all of us are still up together that it will never happen again. Nobody has authorized the soldiers to kill. But we now find out this uprising everywhere now. This is not something we will fold our hand to be looking at. This is why we introduce coffee. For some few days, so that so everything that is going on now can be stopped. Uh, my advice at this time is is that everyone should inform everyone that please don't let your kids associate themselves with people burning houses and property. Tell your children it's not something you support. <coughs>
Bang to only in Takiri. That the people Jack. going to school should not go and associate with the people eh, who are in the state. I am very full of sorrow at the moment. You know, people who are more we want to call our traditional rulers who have been stealing our politics that my own tradition ati awon ti abini bino ni mo fe fi asiko yi also pe gbogbo awon bale gbogbo awon baivu we calling on the kavieses and the king and cities bale city wa no pe asiko to ki gbogbo wa ka fenu so wopo ka ja we have to unite voicely o to ge what you are doing is not good. It will be more than what we're thinking of. This is why I'm begging. I will do as much as I can. I need your help, your support, so that we can all do it together. So that all these problems can be put to an end. So that we don't burn houses and properties anymore. So that it can be stopped right away. I will have no more in isolations. We won't cry about our children. The, the homeowner should tell strangers. We will do every arrangement so that everything will die down. But we have to do our own part so that everything will go well. If you go, you need to go. They got to know before you. I'm a duni senior. But we today shall you know. Lack of our long or what no. I fit to she. But we want to take a she. But we want to everything that's gone bad. We will try and repair it. Can't be a big kale. Tom and Mokini di ko abi di keji ti bugwe le fi shell. But we la ma she. We want to want to to just make we bugwe le aje um eni ti a ni rimo. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was the governor there, the governor of Lagos State, actually persuading and telling people that uh, everything should be okay, that they should please uh, do what is right. But what is right to him might not be what is right to the to the people. Tomorrow, there's protest in London. Uh, people are asking me, there's protest in London. We will have T-shirt there, so if you want T-shirt, let me know your send me a message let me know your, your size so that it can be brought to the venue for you tomorrow uh we have we have the black one which is something like this that has pray for our youth that is the one we're bringing out tomorrow we still have the Soros okay one you know who brought Soros okay in the, this is the gentleman that brought Soros okay the governor of lagos state when he was talking to these kids and on behalf of all my guests tonight i hope we can well, all of us can join together and say bye bye to our audience tonight until next time that will come your way tomorrow is actually the next time good night don't have nightmare bye-bye bye-bye good night ladies and gentlemen the national anthem of the newly formed udiriwa nation <laughs>
Heritage TV. La 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 la. Heritage.